Every day, millions of gallons of oil moves from these oil production fields in the far north to refineries in the far south that are thousands of miles away. To put that in perspective, the oil that makes this journey produces enough refined gasoline to power 20% of all American cars on the road. How does all that oil get from Canada to all those American cars? The answer is pipelines. And in this video, I'll explain how that happens, how pipelines move oil from the place it's pulled out of the ground all the way to the truck in your driveway. Let's get started. Before we talk about pipelines, I have a completely different question for you to consider. How does the water and nutrients flow in a tree? There are similarities between a tree and a pipeline system. So let's think about this for a second. In a tree far below the ground, there are roots that pull moisture out of the ground and then the small roots at the edge channel the water together into larger roots that eventually form the trunk that comes out of the ground. The trunk is the main connector that takes the water up to the large branches that spread apart to form the canopy of the tree with smaller and smaller branches that eventually feed the individual leaves. Now hopefully this helps. Let's lay that tree down on this map for a visual reference. Up in the north, we have a number of small feeder lines that come together into larger feeder lines that converge into a trunk line that extends to the middle of North America where branch lines spread out to feed refineries and eventually gas stations. Do you see the comparison? Hopefully that helps. There's a bunch more complexity that we'll get into in a minute, but that's the big picture concept of pipelines. Feeder lines into a trunk line that branches out into distribution lines. Remember the tree. Now I have another picture for you to consider. The garden hose. If you have a garden hose and you stick one end into a rain barrel full of water and you put the other end in your flower garden, you may notice that there's very little water movement. The water doesn't just spontaneously move from the barrel to the garden. If you want to move water, you need a pump. The same is true for oil pipelines. So we've got two pictures here. The pipeline follows a tree structure and the pumps are needed to keep the liquids moving from one end to the other. Let's follow this liquid from the oil well all the way to the gas station. This will fill in a few more details for us. In the oil well video that I made a few months ago, I explained that oil gathers in tanks like these near the wells. At the base of these tanks is one or more pumps that gets the liquids moving. This first leg of gathering is done either by a collection of feeder pipes or delivery trucks. The feeder pipes and trucks take the oil to a regional tank farm. From these regional tanks, the oil is pumped into a larger feed line that meets other feed lines at a terminal on the trunk line. One thing to note is that each major junction point where multiple pipelines come in and are also going out, there's a storage system. And that's because the product coming into that junction is usually not scheduled to go out of that junction point until later. So it needs to be stored somewhere until it's scheduled to go out. For example, what if a company called Trickle Creek Energy has a field of wells in the north that produces a certain grade of oil? They collect their oil in a tank at the trunk line terminal. Now, Triple Creek Energy may have a contract to deliver a certain amount of oil to, say, Eagle Bay Refinery in the south. And once that volume of oil is ready in the storage tank, the trunk pipeline operator schedules it for delivery through the trunk line to the terminal that's closest to the refinery and then puts it in a tank there. From that tank, a branch pipeline delivers the oil to Eagle Bay Refinery. And at each tank along this journey, a pump or a series of pumps is used to bring the oil up to desired pipeline pressure. If you're familiar with how fluids work in a pipe, you'll know that the pressure drops off as you get further away from the pump. Because of this, a pump station is inserted into the pipe 
every 40 to 60 miles to bring the pipeline back up to the desired pressure. The pump stations ensure that the pipeline is a consistent pressure along the pipeline. This keeps the oil moving at a consistent rate. Okay, let's go back to Eagle Bay refinery for a, for a second. In the same way that Eagle Bay had a contract with Triple Creek Energy to receive crude oil, they also have contracts with large gasoline wholesalers or maybe a large retailer. A pipeline now carries the gasoline from the refinery tanks to multiple wholesale terminals for delivery. At each wholesale terminal, there's a fleet of delivery trucks that keep the gas stations in the area stocked with gasoline. That is the whole process. From the tanks next to the oil well, all the way to the gasoline tanks at the gas station. A process of pumps, pipes, tanks, valves, and delivery trucks. As with everything else in the energy industry, the efficiency and safety of pipeline systems is being enhanced by digital measurement, data analysis, and process optimization at a level that wasn't even possible a few years ago. Now companies like Cisco Systems, who I work for, help pipeline operators to securely transport data measurements from these remote locations where measurement happens to central analysis systems. Now for more information on how that whole system works, please visit cisco.com slash go slash oil and gas. Now the next time you fill up your truck with gas, you'll know that it traveled a lot of miles in big pipes through pumps, tanks, and valves to get to your gas tank. Take care.